In this lecture, we'll be installing Linux on the virtual computer. The first thing we need to do before installing Linux is actually go get the ISO image that we'll be using. You can get the ISO image from a link on the Canvas calendar that I've provided, or you can go directly to CentOS's web page, which I have right here. From here, we'll select the download link, then select mirrors. And over here, we're going to click on CentOS public mirror list, then one more click for North American mirrors. And down at the bottom, you can see we have some local links that we can use for the download. I'm going to select the University of Utah link right here. And then I will click on the HTTP link. And I'm given a list of various versions of CentOS that I can download. Now I'll tell you that most of these folders are empty. We're going to go down here to the bottom and select the latest version, which is 6.4. It does not matter what version you download. It, it may be newer by the time you watch this video. That's perfectly fine. The video and instructions should work exactly the same. Let's click on that. Then I'm going to go up here and select the ISOs folder. Click that. Then I'll select i386 because we will be installing a 32-bit version of Linux in the virtual environment. And from here, I'm going to select the CentOS DVD ISO image. And you can see it's pretty large, 3.5 gigs in size, so it can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours to download. This might be a good time just to describe what an ISO image is anyway. Think of it this way. If you've ever zipped a bunch of files into a zipped folder and then emailed that to somebody or gave it to somebody with a USB device, that's exactly what's going on here. An ISO image is basically an archive of the DVD and all the install files that we need um, to install CentOS. So if you th just think about it as a big zipped folder that we can actually mount and then use for the install, you'll have a pretty good idea of what an ISO image is. You can call it an ISO folder if that makes it easier for you, or an ISO file um, if that helps out, but typically you'll hear it referred to as an image. So I'll click on that link and that will start the download. I'm going to cancel out of this because I already have it downloaded. And I'll close this. And now the next thing we need to do is actually create the virtual computer that we'll use to install CentOS on. So I'll select New from the menu. I'll give it a name. You can see that the type Linux has been selected for me. If yours doesn't show up as Linux, just click the down arrow, select Linux from the list, and then we have to make sure we're selecting the correct version. CentOS is based on Red Hat, so you want to make sure that that's selected in your list. Alrighty, after that's done, we're going to click Next. Here we get the default 512 megs of memory. To go through the GUI install, we're going to need more. So I'm going to up that to one gig and then click Next. Here we get to select uh, a drive. If we want to create a new drive or use a previous drive, we'll take the default of create a new virtual drive. Here we can select what type a virtual drive we're going to create. This is interesting because if you plan on building this virtual machine and then exporting it to either Parallels or uh, VMware, you can select their type of drive. We're going to leave it at the VDI default because we'll be using VirtualBox. Click Next. I'm going to stay with Dynamically Allocated because that will use the least amount of space initially um, when creating the drive. So I'll leave it there. Select Next. Here, once again, I can change the size of the drive if I want to. We have an 8 gig drive here right now. Pretty much minimum we'll need 
for this install. Um, if it was going to be used in any other way, I would suggest a much larger uh, virtual drive. Uh, well, it also can change the location of where the drive will be installed. I'm going to accept the defaults because we're only doing this for testing purposes. And click Create. All right, our virtual machine has been created. Now what we need to do is actually go through the install process. First thing we're going to do is tell the machine where to find the DVD. And we're not going to use a physical DVD. We're actually going to use the ISO image. We're going to mount it in the virtual environment and use that for the install. So to do that, click, right click on your new computer, select settings. Then I'm going to go down to storage here. As you can see, I have a little DVD image right there. And to the right of that, there's another DVD image with a drop down arrow. I'll click on that. And this is where you can actually mount your DVD ISO image that you downloaded. Now you can see mine's already in the list, but you can just click the little folder and choose yours. Right there is mine. Click open. And now you can see down here in location, we've actually mounted that DVD in the virtual environment. This would be very much like taking a DVD and putting it into a DVD drive. But we don't have to go through all the burning process, which is really nice and convenient. I'll select OK. 